Alright. So this is the big start of like why we needed it. Um, it was to justify some of the stuff that we're going to be going into. Today, we're going to do basically just two examples. Two examples, right? I'm going to show you um, the start of what we're doing here. It's called the sum and difference formulas for sine and cosine. We're only going to do one of them today. We're going to just do the, we'll do like cosine first. That's what most textbooks always show. And uh, we'll do like the difference formula for it. And then again, like tomorrow, we'll continue. Um, we'll, we'll show like the sum, and we'll do some of the other ones. Uh, today, we're doing some serious math. Not like I'm not going to have you write down everything I'm going to do. I'm gonna, I'll tell you when I just want you to watch versus what I want you to write down. Um, I'm going to show you how they develop the formula, and that's the part I just want you to watch. This is the part that can be brutal. It's painful to see it for the first time um, because it, it requires pretty much everything we've done up until this point. And we're kind of mixing it all together. And that's the part I just want you to watch. I will not expect you to be able to do this on a test or to do this on a homework. This, this is the part where it's like a geometry part where I show you where did they come up with this. Does, does that make sense? So this, um, the first class they watched, they, they somewhat got it. They got pieces here and there. And then when we got to the end, I show them, okay, this is what I want you to write down. This is what we're going to use from now on. They, they understood that. Okay? Um, but we're gonna, I'm going to introduce this for the first time. And it, it can be tough. Um, so we're going to do the cosine formula, and what we're basically doing today is we're doing this. The cosine of when we subtract angles. Okay? So you're subtracting angles on the inside. Um, most people have a misconception. Like when they, when they want to do a problem like this, when you want to subtract two angles on the inside and find the cosine of it. Um, most people have a misconception that it's the same as doing this. That is not the same math. That is not how we do that. We don't distribute a cosine through the parentheses. There is an actual formula that I'm going to show you how they developed that this represents. Now, the problem is most people, like, if I just showed you the formula, you wouldn't understand what it means. Why we ever do something like this is when we want to find the exact answer for random angles. Like, for instance, 15 degrees. Do you agree that we don't have like a special triangle or something that has 15 degrees in it? Three? Like we don't have that triangle. The triangles we have are the 30, 60, 90 triangle, the 45, 45, 90 triangle. So what we're going to try to do today for the first time is give you the formula so we can actually attempt to find the exact answer for this without a calculator. So no calculator necessary. And what we're going to basically do is, I'll just kind of pick a couple angles. Um, that we're going to use angles from your from your unit circle, um, which is on the back of your property sheet. Can you pull that up? Yeah. Look at. Uh, hold that back set up. So if you see that circle on that property sheet I gave you, that circle has a bunch of angles on it, like a ton of different angles. There's 30, 60, 90s. There's 45s. There's 135s, 150s. There's just a bunch of angles on that unit circle. We can use any of those angles you want and plug them in here, as long as that when you subtract them, they make 15. So like, for instance, the easiest ones I always think of is like 60 minus 45. Do you agree that those two angles subtract to be 15? Sure do. Okay. These definitely have a special triangle, agree? So the goal today at the very end of class is to come back to this problem and actually solve, find the exact answer for this thing, no calculator necessary. Like the exact value of it. Make sense? Now, I 
want to see this formula is tough. So from now on, for the next 10 minutes, I just want you to watch. No pencils necessary. Just try to wrap your head around what I'm doing. Okay, so this is coming up with how do they develop this, the formula for it, so that I can use it down here. Okay, so how this works and why this is important. So imagine we're on a Cartesian coordinate plane. Okay, and there's two angles, there's thetas and betas, right? So let's say we're talking about beta first. Beta, let's say beta is you know starting here, or always at the origin, and beta is going up, you know, this many degrees, that's beta degrees, and we're gonna stop here. And let's say we're on a unit circle. So unit circle, how like what's the radius of a unit circle? One radius, not the full, right? So the radius of the circle is one, so that's the distance, right? This coordinate right here. Um, can be found by doing um, the triangle, by doing you know sine, cosine, and tangent to find this coordinate. Um, it, you know we can make a right triangle right there. The the x coordinate would be the cosine of whatever beta is. That 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 would represent your x number because um, you go um, cosine would be the adjacent wall over the hypotenuse. So that's cosine over one, right? It's the x over one, and then this number going up would be the sine of beta. And that, because that would be the opposite wall over the hypotenuse. So that would be the y number over the hypotenuse, so y over 1. So the, these trig functions actually give you x and y, because the unit circle of the hypotenuse is always 1. So this coordinate right here, to get to this spot, this is the coordinate that we use. Cosine beta, comma, sine beta, for a unit circle. Does that make sense, like how you get to that coordinate? We're going to use that fact. We're going to use that concept here in a second. Now, if I go anywhere else on this unit circle, anywhere else that you want to go, um, let's say I want to go, instead of beta degrees, let's go theta. So theta is like over here somewhere. Let's, so I'm going to open up all the way to where theta is. So this is theta degrees, and it opens up over here. Okay? And we know this length here on the unit circle. So for a unit circle, this length is 1 still. Um, but the coordinate, how would I get to this location? What do you think? Using that same concept. How would I get to here? Use this concept. Cosine theta, sine theta. Not beta, but theta. theta. So cosine theta, sine theta. So that's how you get to that coordinate right here. Okay? Now, why I brought that up, why I wanted you to see this, is because we we are going to get to the point where we can find, if we had two angles, theta and beta, right? We can find the angle in between them, this angle. This angle that's in between theta and beta, this angle right here is the difference between them. It's theta minus beta. Does that make sense to you? That's the angle that's in between where beta is and where theta ended. Um, is that angle a right angle? No. It can be any angle. So what I'm basically implying is that what we're doing here, this is the start of it, we're, we're able to now do, use the trig functions for random, what they call oblique triangles. Triangles that are not right triangles. And that's, this is the start of some, like, some serious math, like some serious pre-calc -calc math, where we can actually develop formulas and actually find exact values for wall lengths and angle measures when it's not right anymore. And that's something we've never done. If you think about all the stuff we've done in like Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, the trends have mostly been right triangles. You know, we've done the Pythagorean Theorem, we've done the Sokotoa, uh, the trig functions, but they've always been right. Can we find wall lengths when they're not? And well, that's what we're doing. This is the start of it. Does that make sense now? Because obviously, you agree that that is definitely not a triangle we've ever done before. So that's, that's the concept that we're doing. Now, how they came up with this crazy formula, like how do they know that this works, is what I'm about to show you. And that's the part that is really tough to watch. Okay? Wonderful. All right, so just bear with me. In the end, I'll show you the formula, and this is how they developed it. All right, so what we're gonna do, and how they came up with the formula to actually find how to subtract angles and what this actual value would be, is they used the side of a triangle. They actually used this wall right there. They use that wall to help me out. And that's that's the weird part, that they're using a random wall length. Now, let's call this coordinate, let's call this point P, let's call this point Q. 
So what they actually did is they, they used the distance from P to Q. Now does anyone remember how to find distance like back in algebra one or geometry days? Like anyone remember the distance from it? We did it like the very beginning of the year in this class. How to find distance along a, like a line. No, no one in the other class remembers it either. It's, it's a big square root. And what you do is you subtract the x coordinates and you square it. And then you subtract the y coordinates and you square those. Now, do you somewhat remember that? No. no. Oh, weird. All right, so we did talk about it, though. Mm -hmm. You take the x coordinates, you subtract them, take the y coordinates, subtract those, and that actually gives you the, the distance from p to q. Okay, but what are my x coordinates up here? Cosines. Yeah, cosines. So we have to plug those in. So this is cosine theta minus cosine beta squared. Yep, sine theta minus sine theta squared. And this is the start of how they developed it. Now, what we have to do is we have to square this. So you can't just distribute the square. There is a binomial in here. So we have to write two parentheses down and FOIL it. So this is cosine theta minus sine, or cosine beta. Cosine theta minus cosine beta. All right. So we're going to FOIL first outer and inner lattice. I'll put this part in green so you can kind of follow along. The other one I'll put in different color, maybe red over there. So it's cosine times cosine. Cosine squared. Cosine squared. Thing. Yeah. Um, outer, that's negative cosine theta, cosine beta, because I can't actually multiply those. Inner, cosine beta, cosine theta. Doesn't actually matter if that word beta, write those in. And then last, negative times a negative, positive, and that would be cosine squared. Betas. So they're called betas, so it's cosine squared. Make sense? Like how I foil? That's yeah, tough. I know. If you're following along, you're doing well. If you're not, don't worry, don't sweat it. Okay, so I just distributed this first out and last. Now I'm going to do that the same for those back there. And I'll put it maybe a different color. So there's a parenthesis back here being multiplied. This is sine theta minus sine beta. Sine theta. Minus sine theta. All right, so we got to foil that. I'll put it in a red color. I'll put it down here. So sine times sine, sine squared. And again, this would be one long radical, so they'd actually be back there. I just don't want to use the other side of the marker board. Uh, so that's sine squared. Sine times negative sine is negative sine theta sine beta. Um, inner is negative sine beta sine theta. And it doesn't matter the order I wrote those in because uh, they're being multiplied anyway. And the negative times negative is positive sine squared beta. Make sense? Okay, I know it's tough. Now this is the part where I said earlier, we're going to use some of the stuff I've taught you. The stuff that we've done basically the past week, the trigonometry. There's a couple things in here that we can substitute out that are actually easier to make this, it, it simplifies this front down. Alright. So, we're going to simplify this. There is a formula that we had on your property sheet. What happens when you take cosine squared plus sine squared? It's one. So if they have the same angles, it makes it one. Right? I'm really have your name today. All right. So it's one. Now these things I can't do anything with them. Um, so that I'm just going to. These are actually the exact same thing, and they're both being subtracted. So there's actually two of them. So I do have negative um, 2 cosine thetas, cosine betas. They're actually both the same, so there's negative 2 of them. There's negative 2 of these, negative 2 sine thetas, sine betas. Can't do anything with those. Um, but cosine squared plus sine squared. One. One again. <laughs> right, that's not that one. All right. And then the idea is that I can combine the ones. Right. So if I combine the 1 plus 1, what does that mean? 17. Two. Seventeen. Yeah, seventeen. Alright. Two. And I'll just put the two on. Alright. Now, there's nothing more I can do there, but I'm not done. Right? So there's nothing more I can do to that. But I'm going to show you the other side. Because most people when they look at that picture, they're really it's tough to look at, right? It's in a weird, awkward spot. It's like shifted upwards. It's kind of it's not a right triangle, it doesn't have to be. It's just I know that these walls are ones. That wall's random because I don't know what this angle is. So whatever theta minus beta is. But I'm going to turn the picture so it's easier to look at. And then we'll come back. So I'm going to leave that on the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this picture to make it a little bit easier to understand. 
Now, the length of this wall, what was this again? One. So I'm gonna, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this triangle and I'm basically gonna put this thing right on top of the x-axis. So it's gonna go one this direction. And then the angle will still stay the same, I'm just gonna turn it a little bit. So this thing will come up a little bit higher. Um, that will make this, this problem a little bit easier to understand for like the numbers wise. Um, and then we'll come back to this. So I'm gonna move down the board. Everyone's still following with me? Okay, all right. We have uh, lost camera, Let's start over here. <laughs> Okay. Now, I'm going to turn that picture, and we're going to um, we're going to put that oops, use that same picture, but now I'm going to put that one wall right here, and that wall length was what one one. And then the triangle went in this direction. I don't know where it ended up, but it ended up somewhere up here. We know that this length was one. Um, what was the angle that was in here again? 15. Now, what was that angle that I had up there? Uh, theta minus theta. Yeah, this angle is still theta minus theta. Now, obviously, you're right. We're going to come back to the 15 later, right? I knew it. Um, so that's theta minus theta. So now that I've turned this triangle, this, do you agree that this spot is somewhere different? It's not the same coordinate that we used earlier. It's not that cosine theta, sine beta. This spot has moved this direction, because I turned the triangle. So this coordinate now is this. Cosine theta minus beta, comma, sine theta minus beta. That's where the new coordinate is. Now, why is that? Um, is because I, when I turned it, you still have to find the coordinate for this, so it's still an x number and a y number, but we have to use this angle now. So that's where that new location is. Now, what is the coordinate right here, though? Common sense. One. One, one comma? One. Zero. 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 Yeah, it's one comma zero. Okay. That, that is still the same exact triangle. So technically, this is still represent point P. This is still represent point Q, even though they're in different locations now. It's still this, That stick is still the same length as the other one. So if I want to find the length of PQ, right, the length of PQ, that is still going to be the exact same length as what I did earlier. But the thing is, do you agree that my coordinates look different? Yeah. So we're, we're going to do the same exact distance formula that we just did earlier, but using these coordinates now. And it should be the same. They should be equal to each other, even though they don't look different. So we're going to do this big square root. I need to subtract my x coordinates. What are my x coordinates now? Cosine. Minus. What? Okay, square. Now, what are my y coordinates? Minus beta. Minus beta. Minus zero. Squared. Okay. So this part, I'm going to need to have two parentheses. We'll foil it together. This part, do I need to write two parentheses? No. No, because that zero can go away. So that zero goes away, I'm left with this, sine theta minus beta, and that thing is squared. So I can just dump the power down. It's just one single item, and I'm squaring it. So I get to put the power two on it. right? But up here, I do need to foil these together. Um, cosine theta minus beta minus one, cosine theta minus beta minus one. All right, that's all on the radical sign. So let's let's actually uh, let's actually foil this together. So first, outer, inner, last. So first, that is going to be cosine theta minus beta squared. Yeah, cosine squared theta minus beta. Um, cosine theta minus beta times negative one. Cosine theta minus beta. And negative one times that. Same thing. Theta minus beta. And then negative one times negative one is positive one. All right. So so far so good. And then back here, if I square that thing, it's just sine squared, theta minus beta. And this is still all under the radical sine. There's a couple things here. Um, these two can combine. They're the same thing. They're just negative and negative, so that makes negative two of those. Um, cosine squared plus sine squared. One. One. Okay. Cosine squared plus sine squared, that's one. So the ones will combine. So really what I'm looking at here is that these things make one, 
There's another one here, so those will combine to make two, and then these things will combine to make negative two cosine thetas minus betas. And that's still a hole under the rack of sun. Does that make sense? Like what we did there with combined things? So it's using the trig identities, right? These are Pythagorean identities, making sure that those combine to make one. What I'm basically telling you is that this thing right here is the same as that thing. They're the same distance. It's still the same PQ. I just turned the triangle a little bit so we could look at, and do you agree that that is definitely easier to look at than that thing? It's just simpler numbers. But they're still the same operation. So now what I'm going to do, full circle, and you're still watching, I'm going to basically set those two things equal to each other, and I'll show you what the formula is. And this will be, we're coming up to the part where I can show you how they evolve. Okay? All right. Well, let me turn the camera here. So we're almost done, and then we'll, I'll give you the final. All right. Okay, so. Okay, so here we go. So this is, I'm going to set both those things equal to each other. So I'm going to start with that one. So can somebody read off what that thing is? Wait, did we write this down? No, not yet. Just coming in two. Two minus two plus sine theta. Theta minus beta. All right. Theta minus beta. All right. And that's equal to this one. Two minus two cosine theta cosine theta minus two sine theta sine theta. Two sine theta. Two sine theta. So we're at this point. These two things are equal. That's what we just showed. They're the two distances that PQ set equal to each other. I, um, this is an equation. It's an equation. So um, it has an equal sign. I can do the same operations to both sides. If I do it to both sides, it's still balanced. It's still a balanced equation. So I can add stuff to both sides, subtract stuff, multiply. I can square both sides. Because that's an operation. If I do it to both, it's still equal. In fact, let's do that. If I square this side, what happens? Get rid of the square root. So I'm left with two minus two cosine theta minus beta, right? So that I can I can do that. If I square it, that's good, and I have to square this side. So if I square that side, the square root symbol is gone. Two cosine theta cosine beta minus two sine theta sine beta. All right. So far so good. Now. Uh, I can add and subtract stuff to both sides, like I said earlier. So what happens if I subtract twos from both sides? Yeah, twos are gone, right? Those are twos that were added, so I can subtract those. Um, what if I divide the both sides? What if I divide both sides by negative two? Yeah, if I divide both sides by negative two, these two make the number one, like that. And over here, if I divide this side by negative two, um, it's a rule of division. It's, it's a property of division. I can put the two under both. It's actually a rule of fractions. So I can put the negative two over here, the negative two over here, and divide each of these items by because there was two items. So if I divide this thing by two, what happens to the negative twos? Gone. Gone. And if I divide those things by negative twos, that's gone, and that would just make it positive one. Right? Positive. What you're looking at right here is the formula you need to write down right now. Because the whole point of what I just did the past eight minutes was to show you this. That is the formula for how you find the difference between angles. Okay, because it's it's tough to understand like why you'd ever do that. Why why would you suddenly multiply cosines together, multiply sines together to get just this difference? What I showed you is how they developed it. Because I wanted to show you that it does work and where it came from originally. Um, now, obviously that was tough. You watched the whole proof. That is something that is not easy for most people to kind of watch. A lot of you did very well at kind of paying attention to what was going on there. But the goal of today is to show you how to use this. That's the part I want you to know. Like, so if you know the formula, which you have now written down, how do we use it? So we'll, let's come back to that problem we did earlier, the 15 degrees. Let's do that one example, then we're going to move this. Okay? This is just to show you the intro. All right, so let me get rid of all this other stuff. I'll leave the formula on the board here for you. All right. I need two triangles. I need the special triangles. So, 30, 60, 90. 
one, root three, and then two, and then a 45, 45. One, one, root two. Okay, so if we go back to what we're gonna what we're gonna discuss, I wanted to find the exact value of the cosine of 15 degrees. Like how can we calculate that without a calculator? Uh, the exact value. I'm gonna use this formula to do it. So I'm going to think about two angles that are either on the unit circle on your property sheet or just two angles that are on there. Maybe I should have to be labeled the angles here. 45, 45, 90. That would actually add or subtract. We're going to subtract because that's the formula we've learned now. That would make 15. So the, the angles that we talked about earlier was using 60 minus 45. Are we writing this? Yeah. This is, part of, this is your example. This is your one example I'd like you to write. So it's going to show you how we use this. Yeah, yeah, th yeah, I think it might be on your unit circle right. property sheet, but I will if you don't have it. Right. All right, so do you agree that 60 minus 45 would give you 50? Now, if you don't have the, the special triangles on that property sheet, you're always allowed to add those. Those are some, that's a free game to put on that property sheet. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use this formula. So we are subtracting two angles to make the 15. So this is the formula that we're going to be using. So how I'm going to use this, this is giving me my theta, this is giving me the beta in the actual formula. So the formula for when you subtract angles, it's cosine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle, that's what you're seeing here, cosine theta, cosine beta, plus, which I know is weird, that's completely opposite of what they have in here, plus sine of the first, sine of the second. That's what you're seeing here, sine theta, sine beta. Now these are very easy to figure out. Those are things we can just use the triangle and rattle off the answers. So for instance, on this triangle, what is the cosine of 60? So cosine stands for adjacent over the hypotenuse wall. What was cosine of 60? What's the adjacent of the 60? One. And what's the hypotenuse? That's a cosine of 60. Okay. We're going to multiply that by the cosine of 45. Cosine of 45. One. One over root two. So that's root two over two. If you simplify it, I don't like to look at radicals on the bottom. Uh, plus the sine of 60. Root three over two. And sine of 45. One over two, which is root two over two. Now we're almost done. We got Two more lines and we're done here. We have the exact value of what the cosine of 15 will be. So we're going to multiply these two together. When you multiply fractions, you actually multiply the top and bottom. That's a weird rule. But you multiply the top one times root two is root two. Two times two? Four. four. Okay. Plus root three times root two? Root six. Root six. You can multiply those. Two times two? Four. And the last step, we can add straight across. And they have the same denominator. That's nice. So the denominator is 4 when you add the fractions. The denominator doesn't add. But the top, you can't actually do anything with that. So it's root 2 plus root 6. What you're looking at right here is the exact value of the cosine of 15 on the calculator. So no, like when you type in cosine of 15, it gives you that crazy decimal across the screen. Root 2 plus root 6 in parentheses divided by 4 is the same exact value. It's the same decimal. Now, why that's weird, what some people don't think about Cosine stands for the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So if you had a right triangle with 15 in it, 15 degrees in it, your hypotenuse would be some multiple of 4. It's going to be some multiple of 4. And the adjacent wall will be some multiple of that thing. That's what they're saying. So let's say maybe the hypotenuse is 12, it's some multiple of 4. Then, then this thing, you multiply this thing by 3, and that will be the adjacent. So you can actually find exact values of triangles that would actually make that thing work. That's the, that's the important thing. Okay, so do you see how I'm using the formula now? Now, obviously, this is your first day. I know that's hard as hell looking at that. But um, we're going to practice this more and more and more, right? So um, we're going we're gonna to actually, like, we're going to look at how to do addition formulas for angles. We're going to look at how to do it for sine, because sine has its own formulas. We're going to look at difference formulas for that. And then eventually, maybe Thursday this week, we'll look at tangent. 
we'll look at how to do that. But we're going to practice it, so don't feel like you're lost. <laughs> okay, we good? All right. All right, Jail. Let's bring this out. Okay.